More than any other person, Nigel Farage was responsible for dragging Britain out of the EU and showing other nations that they could and should be free sovereign nations capable of running themselves, free of the socialists who are now unsurprisingly declaring an end to abundance and the good life, as they always, always do. Nigel Farage joins us now. Nigel, great to see you. How are you? Uh, good morning, everybody. Very, very well indeed, and great to be back on Outsiders. Fantastic. Great to have you here. Um, so, listen, the, we now learn from your uh, friends across the channel that the era of abundance and the era of a good life is over. Does this surprise you, Nigel? No, he's probably right, because if you go green, if you pursue net zero, uh, you finish up not being able to heat your home in the winter, uh, you finish up not being able to turn on an aircon unit if you've got one in the summer. Uh, you finish up not being able uh, to buy uh, new clothes or enough food or good food uh, to feed yourself properly. And what we're seeing, what we're seeing, are two things going on here. Number one, an absolute dramatic failure of policy. The drive for net zero has seen France, and I regret to say the UK, see manufacturing jobs move to India, to China, uh, we import vast amounts you know, of oil, of gas, of coal, much of it from Russia. And now the truth is, Mr. Putin has got the whole of Europe by the short and curlies, and everybody is facing a very, very bleak winter. Rita. And we've seen just Friday electric electricity prices surge in France and Germany by 25%. It is going to be a terrible winter in Europe for, for so many people. And in the UK, we're hearing about up to half the population struggling to pay their energy bills. Yes, you're absolutely right. But also the prospect, literally, of the lights going out. Now, we haven't lost power in this country for 50 years. The last time it happened, it brought down a Conservative government. But what Boris Johnson did, who, by the way, was never, ever a Conservative, he just masqueraded. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, a Metro Liberal, if ever I saw one. But Boris's great thing was, we're going to make Britain the Saudi Arabia of wind. That's and what we've been doing... <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, completely bonkers stuff. And what we've done is to despoil our beautiful seascapes, many of our magnificent uplands. Uh, and because it's wonderful, isn't it? What you do is you put a big subsidy, a 25% subsidy on everybody's electricity bill. So the poor give lots and lots of money to giant multinationals and Chinese manufacturers. And then when the wind doesn't blow, guess what happens? You need those terrible fossil fuels that everyone thinks should end. And we genuinely now are not producing our own gas despite having vast reserves. The Conservative government got rid of our East Coast storage facility, no. believing that in this lovely globalist world, just in time supply chains would sort everything out. <laughs> so it isn't just France that's in a mess. We're in a mess with this too. We need a radical rethink. You know, whether you produce your own gas, oil, coal, or import it, even if you are terrified about carbon dioxide, the net effect on the world is zero. And the big boast here from the Tories, who, by the way, are, are completely eco-green. I, I, I mean, to the extent that Boris also proposed taking out of use 30% of our farmland and turning it over to some bizarre concept of rewilding. Uh, you know, if you do all of those things, you, fo you follow those policies, at some point, reality strikes.